welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and we are continuing our video series today on matrices by looking at applications. And before we get started, I'd just like to say a huge welcome to all of our new subscribers across the channel. We are growing all the time and I felt because we're growing so much that we should get onto Instagram. So yes, we're on Insta now. Why not look there for McClatchy Maths? You can also still find us on Facebook as well. And we're going to be doing a lot more of a personal touch on Instagram. You'll see me in between takes. You'll see me filming. You'll see me behind the scenes and some bloopers. So stay tuned for all of that. Okay, let's get started and talk about applications of matrices. We're aiming this video at our senior students, grade 11 and 12 in general and specialist maths right across Australia. Quite possibly some other places around the world too. If you are joining us from outside Australia, a very big welcome to you. In this particular video, I'm going to talk about adjacency matrices. I'm going to show you some worked examples. Then we'll jump in and talk about directed networks. This leans itself a little bit towards what you will be doing in year 12 as well for general maths. And then we'll talk about what's coming up in our future videos. So let's get right into it. The word adjacency or adjacent is where it comes from. You'd remember this from trigonometry probably back to grade nine. Adjacent means next to or next door to. So we're looking in matrices about connections that are next to one another. And you come back to this as part of the U12 syllabus as well. So do bear this in mind that next year, if you're in grade 11, you're going to have to come back and review this before you finish your external exams. Okay, so a matrix can often be used to describe connections between people, towns, places, businesses, objects. And so they're a great way of showing how many different connections exist between certain people. When you have an adjacency matrix, it represents how many connections there are between two objects. So Let's have a look at our first example and that will make a lot more sense. This is a social media network. We've got six people. They are represented by the letters A, B, C, D, E and F. And we need to show this as an adjacency matrix. So let's have a very quick review of the diagram. This may be a little bit unfamiliar to you if you're in grade 11, but if you're in grade 12, you're going to be seeing a lot of networks represented with these straight lines between dots and letters representing different things. So if we look at C in the middle, um, that represents a person and they have one, two, three, four, five different connections with different people. So they are pretty much the core of the whole friendship group. They know everybody. Then you've got, um, for example, A sitting on the outside. They're friends with C, but also friends with E, but not friends with anybody else in the network. So we're going to represent that as in a matrix. So our very first step, step is to set up that six by six matrix, six rows, six columns. You can see A, by, A and B snuck on there a little bit easier beforehand. So we've got this blank matrix now. Now it's simply a case of looking throughout our network and working out who has connections with who. So we're going to count every one of those direct connections between what we call one vertex and every other vertex. Now a vertex just means those little dot points where you've got the letters, they represent people um, or the number of connections that they have with other people. So let's start with the letter A, which represents our first person. And A has obviously no connections with themselves, unless they had an Instagram account and a second Instagram account that they were friends with. That would possibly be a situation where you might see the number one in this particular case. But in this case, they don't have any connections with anybody other than person C and person B. So we're going to represent that in our first column, you can see that with person C, there's the number one, and with person E, there's a number one as well. And that basically represents that they're friends with them on one social media platform. Obviously, if they were friends on multiple social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, etc., then they might have multiple pathways passing between the same two people. Okay, we're gonna repeat that for all the other people in our network. There's person B, person C, person D, person E, person F. I would possibly recommend you pause right here and just verify that I got all of that right. As you can see, person C, if you look down their column, they're the one with the most connections. And as we talked about earlier, they're the one who's connected to everybody else. So they're all ones in their column and of course a zero for with themselves. Okay. Now, in this particular matrix, we're only looking at what we call a one-step connection. So basically, somebody is absolutely next door to the other person and they have a connection between them, then that represents as a one. However, if you look at person A, as we've looked at before, person A would possibly know person D, but they'd have to go through person C because person C is that middle contact. 
So that would be what we would call a two-step connection. To get from A to D, you'd go through C. If these were towns and this was a road network, if I wanted to travel from A to F, I'd firstly have to travel either through C or through E. So a one-step connection represents they're adjacent to one another, exactly one pathway between the two. Okay, now sometimes with an adjacency matrix, you want to work out how many different ways you can get from one place in the network to another place. So here is a picture of a road network. I've kept this one very simple. Four towns. There are two ways to get between A and B. There are two ways to get between C and D, so there's two roads there, and only a single road between A and C. So what I want to do here is think about how I could get to other places on the map um, going through somewhere else. That would be what we would call a two-step connection. So if I wanted to go, for example, from B to C, I have to pass through A. That's a two-step connection there because I've basically traveled across two edges to get there. Now, if you haven't done networks in year 12 yet, those straight lines and the curvy lines that connect the different people called the vertices are called edges. So if I travel more than one edge, it's a two-step connection. Um, if I wanted to go from A um, to B, and then back to C, it's actually going to be a three-step pathway. So just bear in mind, this is what we're talking about with one-step, two-step connections, three-step connections, and so on. Now, like I showed you before, if I want to go from D all the way down to B, I need to pass through C and A. That's another example of a three-step connection. So to find out how many different combinations of connections there are in a network, then we need to raise our matrix to a power. So I'll just repeat that in a little bit of a different way. Now we've done all the one-step connections in our previous example. Let's say I wanted to find all the possible two-edge or two-step connections that exist within this very small network. What I'm going to do is take my original matrix that I created for the one-step connections. I'm going to square that particular matrix. I'm going to multiply it by itself. This principle also applies if I want to find the three-step connections or four-step connections with a network, which you can imagine, there'd be lots and lots of different combinations of ways you can get around a network. So the more different step connections I add, the more powers I raise it to. So a three-step connection, I am multi I'm raising it to the power of three. I'm multiplying that matrix by itself three times. Now, if you've watched my previous video on product matrices, you'll know that could probably be quite a lengthy process. Um, so hopefully you won't have to do too many of those raising to power of threes because that takes a long time. Raising to the power of two is lengthy enough. So that's what we're going to do in our next example. We're going to raise to the power of two. I'm not going to do it super slow like my previous video. I am going to whiz through it a little bit quicker. So if you haven't watched the video on how to do product matrices, go back and watch last week's video and have a look at that one. I'm going to assume you already know how to do running and diving. So in this particular case, we're going to take that road network from the previous slide. We're going to take the matrix that's been developed for us, and then we're going to basically raise that to the power of two to find the number of two-step connections between different towns. Okay, so firstly, we've got to recognize that that matrix is going to be squared and that it's going to look like this. So I've got all of the first part there and the second part there, I'm multiplying it by itself. Now I've also then got to perform my multiplication of matrices. This is a four by four matrix. So that means I'm going to result in a four by four matrix. So I have to remember my process and I've summarized the process here. So I'm going to take row one, I'm going to run across it, dive down column one, then column two, then column three, then column four. Then I'm going to come down row two, back to column one, two, three, four, column three, sorry, row three, one, two, three, four, and then row four, one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to end up with 16 numbers for my final matrix, which is a, um, the matrix squared. Okay, so I'll take you through that just for the first row. You'll get the gist of it. It'll be a good time to pause then and see if you could do it all by yourself. Okay, so let's kick it off. First of all, we're starting with row one times by column one. So I take um, the first element, which is element 11, zero, and I'm going to multiply that by zero. That gives me zero. I'm going to add that then to number two, multiplied by number two, which gives me four. And then I'm going to add one by one, which gives me one. 
and then I'm going to add 0 by 0. So my result is going to be 4 plus 1, which gives me 5. And let's pop that into our next part there. So now I'm going to repeat that process again, but using row 1 again, this time with column 2. So once again with column 2, which is that column with B as the header, I've got 0 times 2 plus 2 times 0 plus 1 times 0 plus 0 times 0. Now, I had a teacher colleague tell me a little bit of a tip. She likes the run and dive, but something that she does, um, big shout out there to Mrs. Grimm, what she does is that she places her finger on the first element or the element in the row that she's using, and then she places her thumb on the column that she's using, and she switches it from running to diving. That might be a nice visual, physical way for you to do that as well, to be able to make sure that you're always moving the numbers every time. Okay, so once we do that and we add them all together, we get zero. We repeat that process now with column three, and you can see that I've changed the color in my process so that you can see where we're up to. And the sum of all of those is going to be zero again. And then for column four, that's going to be the number two. And then I would say pause here, see if you can do row two, three, and four by yourself. That's going to be coming up now. So have a go on your own. And now that you've unpaused, let's have a look and see what row um, the next one's going to look like. And then the one after that, and then the one after that. Did you get it right? Hopefully you did. Yeah, you. There's also some great online calculators um, to check your work. So if you're doing work and you don't necessarily have the solutions next to you and you just want to check that you're on the right track, because sometimes we do tend to second guess ourselves, you can Google online matrix calculator and you can simply put the numbers in and multiply the two matrices together and it will give you the result. So you can check that you're doing the right thing. I actually did that for this video as well because I always second guess myself too. So, and yay, I got it right first go. Okay, let's talk now about directed networks. Sometimes we have networks where the objects um, in the, the matrix will actually flow only in certain directions. So if you look at the picture below, these could actually be towns and the flow could be representing one-way streets. You can only get from A to C, but you can't get back to A unless you go a whole lot of different places. And sometimes we do find that sort of situation in real life. There's directed flow. Now, some particular textbooks call this a communication matrix. Um, I'm not sure if that's actually the correct definition. I did a deep dive on the internet and found completely different things for communication matrices. Um, so some textbooks seem to be calling that on their own. But really what we're talking about here are directed networks and the graph is called a digraph because it's a directed graph. Let's look at worked example three, create the matrix for the directed network shown. So we've got five vertices, A, B, C, D, E. So it's gonna be a five by five matrix. So we set that up first of all. Now we're going to look at some subheadings. You haven't had these on your matrix before, but because this is a directed network, it's really important to tell the person who's reading your network where you're going from and where you're going to. So I've got from on the left-hand side to across the top. You could have done it in reverse. It's just important that you read the headings and then you follow the headings. So let's firstly look at from our different parts going to A. So A to A, there's no loop road going around A, so that's a zero. Going from B to A, there's no direct way to do that. From C to A, you could go there on that road, but it's a one-way street, so let's not go the wrong way up the wrong way street. Um, D to A doesn't go back to A, and from E to A doesn't go directly back to A either. So it's gonna be all zeros for our first column. Now let's look at all of the flow coming into the vertex B. So from A to B, there is one way of getting there. B to B, once again, no loop road around B, so that's a zero. From C to B, there's a single road. From D to E, um, sorry, from D to B, there is no direct way to go there, so that's a zero. And then once again, we can't go backwards down the one-way street. So for E to uh, B, there's a zero as well. Let's look now at all of the roads going into C. From A to C, there's a direct road in. From B, no way possible. C, no loop road. From D, there's a single road, but from E, there's actually two roads coming in, so that's a number two. And then we repeat that process for vertex D and for vertex E. So we're looking at the from flow and the to flow. So it's very important that you are really consistent with the way that you read the matrix and interpret the matrix.
Okay, well that's all we've got time for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and that it was very informative. Our next few videos are just for our specialist students, so we are going to be looking at some crazy stuff. Determinants and inverses, matrix equations, matrix transformations. So that's going to be something coming up for all of those people. But at the same time, I haven't forgot about all my favourites in general and applications. We are going to also be looking at some of our 2020 complex paper, paper two from Queensland. So do stay tuned for those videos interspersed with one another. Once again, I'd like to thank you so much for joining me here at the channel. Please do like and subscribe. Please do jump onto Instagram and Facebook and follow us there. And if you've got any questions, best place to reach us is kachimasayahoo.com. Also, you can send us a private message or a direct message through Facebook Messenger or through Instagram messages as well. Thank you so much for joining me here at the channel. I'm Natalie McClutchy. You've been watching McClutchy Mass. Have a wonderful day.